there are two books that have been incredibly helpful that I got to give credit for before we jump into this. These books have been helpful and given me great insight. Uh, one of them is called Spiritual Warfare by Dr. Carl Payne. And the second one is Understanding the Wounded Heart by Dr. Um, Marcus Warner. And I'm indebted to both of these men for their great insights. Peter says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9, he tells us a little bit about Satan's operation. He says this. He says the enemy, that Satan and his demons, the enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Looking, hunting, searching for someone to devour. The prowling of the enemy and the spiritual warfare that I've observed has mostly to do with the devil playing sleight of hand with our minds. He gets people thinking about a set of facts that may be true, but that lead to a wrong conclusion. In fact, this strategy of the devil is so common that, that, that it's formed a predictable structure of how strongholds get established. And it's this model, this wounds, lies, vows, strongholds that I want to walk us through this morning because before you can take those thoughts captive and submit them to Christ, it's helpful for you to know what they are. Wounds refer to the difficult or hurtful emotional and relational experiences that we've suffered in life that have now shaped how we see ourselves, how we present ourselves, and how we view God. If someone offers you correction, mean well-meaning correction, and you feel threatened, or you defend yourself vigorously rather than giving it time to marinate, if you struggle, number two, if you struggle with a constant envy, constant envy of other people's success, or if no matter how great your work is, you constantly compare it with others, if you're unable to say no without feeling guilty, or you find yourself robbing time from your family to please people at work or at church, because answering that first question leads to the second stage in how strongholds get established. It's for good reason that Jesus describes the devil as, in, in John 8, 44, Jesus refers to the devil as the father of lies. And then Jesus goes on to say when he lies, he speaks his native tongue because he's a liar. And he, and he repeats this, and he's the father of lies. This tells us that the primary strategy of Satan in spiritual warfare is deception. Let me give you three ways, real quick, to recognize the lies from the enemy. Number one, when the voice or the thought or the idea whispered in your heart is contrary to the scriptures, that's a lie. Number <laughs> two, when the voice, the thought, or the idea whispered in your heart is not specific, but feels so general that you're not even sure what you did wrong? It's a lie. When the voice, the thought, or the idea whispered in your heart is accusatory in nature, if the voice, the thought, or the whisper is condemning in nature, it is a lie from the enemy. It's worth pointing out that the way to combat these lies from the devil is by putting on the whole armor of God that we spoke of last week in Ephesians 6, 8. The whole armor of God has to do with three things. Knowing God's word, believing God's word, and speaking God's word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, your weapon in spiritual warfare is the word of God. So wounds leave us open to lies, and as a result of the lies we experience, we make vows. These are not necessarily declarative statements we may have verbalized at any point in time. Rather, a vow is a filter statement or a mindset through which we begin to live our lives. Vows are a way to protect ourselves from ever getting hurt again after we experience pain. But because it's rooted in a lie from the father of lies, the flip side of trying to protect ourselves through vows is that we end up not trusting anybody. We end up not trusting God. This process of wounds which become lies, which end up being vows, unfortunately end up becoming strongholds in our lives. And that's how we get strongholds. 
The defining mark of a stronghold is that it, it's repetitive. It's wrong. I'm talking about those areas of your life that, that you, those unhealthy habits, behaviors, let's call them sin, um, that you just keep coming back to no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you seek counsel, no matter, like you just keep, those are, that, that's your first indication that this is a stronghold in my life. So this week, your assignment is to prayerfully connect the pieces. The wounds, the lies, the vows, and that have become strongholds in your life all have to do with us wanting to prove our worth. The issue of your value and your worth is not determined by whether people like you or not. Nor is it determined by your performance, whether as a parent, as a spouse, as a worker. The issue, listen to me, the issue of your value and your worth has already been settled at the cross of Jesus Christ. God saw every failure you would ever have. On the cross of Calvary, God saw every shortcoming that you haven't fallen into yet. He saw every sin, every ugly thought, every dark, dirty secret on the cross. The God, the author of life, saw all of your junk and still died for you. So that there's no accusation that the enemy will throw at God about you that God doesn't go, I got it covered covered under the blood you don't need to perform to win God's approval because you already have it through Christ and the ability to demolish the strongholds in your life is rooted in holding on to this truth of what Jesus Christ has already done and that's that on the cross you are already dearly loved, you were highly valued by the Father, you were worth dying for, and the price of your sin has been paid for. 